What is up peeps, this is For The Win TCG, and I'm welcome you back to another YouTube video. And today, we're going to be playing Buzzguard. This card, uh, this card, this deck did see quite a bit of play quite a while ago. Um, I think it was around the time Forbidden Light was released. Um, but it's kind of just dropped down um, as the meta has started to shape. But this, this deck just seems really, really valuable uh, and, and really... Viable is the word I wanted to say right now. I mean when it comes to the current format item cards are Everywhere there is just so much item cards going about there's the switches. There's uh, well I'm just gonna forget every single item card now uh, Electro powers and stuff like that and then you've got your fire crystals and then you've got your fiery flints and Basically this this this, this format is littered with item cards. So why is Garbodor not dominating? Why is Garbodor not out there? Um, and also Buzzword being able to one-shot a Picarom and be able to withstand its own anyway. Sorry, my mic fell. Um, being able to hold its own is something that has been proven anyway in the past in the meta. So I thought, why not revisit this deck and really put into question, why is this deck not doing as well? Is it just not on people's radar? Are people just more focused on playing other decks? Is there a big counter to this deck that I've not recognized yet? Which probably is the most likely one. But, alas... Uh, we are going to uh, try this out and see. Now, I've actually used this this deck quite a lot recently. Um, I play it in my tournament games because this deck does have a lot of fun when playing Reshirad and stuff, um, which is pretty cool. So, uh, I like doing that <laughs> and winning a lot of tournaments with this deck. So, that would be that. Um, but actually, I'm not sure if, the, uh, if it's legal to play... Um, Unbroken Bonds in tournaments, so I did use a team-up variant. But, ah, oh, this is perfect. Okay, there we go, sweet. So this 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 deck is literally the ideal matchup for us because we're going to have Shine of Punishment knocking these things down. Uh, we're going to have them playing, or expectedly playing a ton of items, and if they don't, then they are just uh, limiting their own capabilities in this deck because it relies so much on items. Um, there we go. So hopefully this could work out very well they haven't seen the the, the trubbish go down which is why i didn't bench it because if they don't see the trubbish go down then they're not expecting a garbador so yeah so uh okay we could be they could be charging up our stuff real quick here which is kind of good because they're gonna do that very thing as well they're gonna charge up super fast so um what's your thoughts on electric Man magnetic radar currently now i know it's going to be almost a staple in the peak uh in the peak rom deck post rotation because we're losing ultra ball which is insane i mean think about it losing ultra ball is just what um so that's going to be the ultra ball of the deck i, I uh, effectively speaking um so what do you think about it now though is it something that really needs to be played in the deck with ultra balls and nest balls and stuff like that but obviously after rotation yes but now i'm not sure anyway enough yapping on um we get to go for the counter stadium which is good they're going to play Ultra Ball. Get some more items in there. Yeah, you do. Two, four, six, eight. So we're hitting 80 damage for single energy with the Garbodor right now, which is good. Um, and hopefully this guy drops a Dedenny and just gets rid of a ton of more item cards. That would just be so good. Because they don't even know they're up against a Garbodor. Um, so I want them to just trash all the items they can, turn one. <laughs> so when I drop the Garbodor, they're like, oh, crap. <laughs> um... So, and, and they don't start limiting themselves. Because obviously the way to counter Garbodor is just not to play your item cards. But um, I guess at that point you're effectively being item locked, right? Um, I did actually bring up this discussion on Twitter before. And someone did mention, it's like, if you're up against Reshirad, they're just going to turn on Kyabi and just go from there. Which that makes perfect sense. Um, and just hold their hand. That also makes perfect sense. So what you could do is you could um, pair Garbodor up with, with the likes of Gengar. Uh, it makes perfect sense, right? I used to pair Garbodor with Tre um, Trevenant, which has the same attack as Gengar, right? Uh, because if your opponent is holding their item cards in their hand, then your Gengar is only amplifying, being amplified. So if you can find a way to switch between the two, maybe play a um, Altar of the Moon, you can just switch between the two whenever you feel like it, and just, just start attacking based on... Wow, that's a ton of items! Okay, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. We're in 160 damage, turn 1... Just because of their play. And you better not promote that thing. Oh my god, they are... They're going abs... Do you know what? Hats off to them. They are going full on turbo right now. But it is only benefiting me. In every way, shape, or form. It is benefiting me. Which is just insane. So, yeah. I mean, I'll take it. They're playing the Electro Power as well. Why are they playing the Electro... Did they play an Electro Power? Wow, they've got free Electro Power down. They can't even attack yet. This is... This is kind of... Silly. Right? Why would you 
empty everything like that. Look, I've just dropped the Trubbish and it's game over, bud. <laughs> oh, Lord, that is crazy. And actually, Erica is better here. I'm just going to play the Erica. They've got a full bench, so we might as well take advantage of this. <laughs> Get as much Trubbish as down as possible. We have all three Garbador. Sick. Okay, um... We're gonna need you down. We're gonna need you down. We ain't even playing games here. I am just gonna go crazy benching this stuff. Let's get rid of the Pokey Gear and a Cynthia. That's a lot of consistency going down, but I don't care. We got a lot of uh, a lot of taking advantage um, of to do here, I guess. I don't know, let's just go in with the Sledgehammer for what would be 60 damage. Plus the Shine of Punishment, just tackling these guys. Oh, this is ideal. This is just ideal for us right now. We got the switch play, we got the Guzma. So if they, even if they retreat, we can Guzma switch into this uh, if we need to. But what we really want is get, getting Garbodors out next turn and getting energy on them. We only have four energy left to work with. I actually play four, um, four rainbows and one extra psychic just to be on the safe side. Um, obviously, this is primarily a Buzzwall deck because you can rely on Buzzwall more than you can on Garbodors. So that's my thought process anyway. Anyway, with that said. Let's promote this to Rachi and see if we can capitalize. Oh, you're... Oh, bro, you are going every single wrong way about it. I mean, they are 170. We need a choice ban, and, and we are in one-hit KO territory getting rid of... Oh, oh, we already are. There we go. We're in one-hit KO territory. Thanks to the shrine. You're throwing all of your eggs into one basket. Bro, read, read the situation, man. I don't think you understand how serious this is. All right, let's Ultra Ball uh, get rid of what... we have. Uh, this is tough. I have to get rid of a Guzma and a Cynthia because I have to just do this, right? Um, and we just need... We have four energy. Four energy that we can obtain. Um, we just need that, right? Do we still have the four? We have the rainbow and the psychic. So we still have the four. So as long as we get rainbow and psychic, we do have a one-hit KO on this guy. Um, and he's thrown all of the energy into that card. So... So long as we pull in. Yeah, we do. All right. Okay. Let's just double check the maths here. Um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 8. Oh, 880. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Skadonk. And uh, see you later, alligator. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, am I, is my point proven yet? <laughs> okay, don't get me wrong. This guy did just dump his, like, half of his deck turn one, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll give him that, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll give you guys, I'll give you guys that, but, oh my gosh, um, that is just insane, so it's pretty much just going to be Garbodor for the rest of the game now, pretty much, because we're just hitting 180 damage for a single, 200 damage for a single energy, it's crazy, um, right now, right, they, they, yeah, that makes perfect sense, but, bro, if you're just going to keep playing items, I mean, it is just as simple as game over right now. It, it, it really is, man. Don't. Although I am one-shotting everything on the field, so he can... He might as well just play everything, but... If he, at one point, benches... Well, he's not going to bench. I was, actually, I was going to say, if he, at one point, benches a Pika Ron, then game over instantly. But for now, it's more kind of just uh, fishing for these Guzmas so we can just take out um, the last, I guess, two prizes after we probably take out this Zapdos. So we do need to get our Garbodors out. Let's not make the mistake of not promoting a Jirachi. Always promote the Jirachi. Um, are we hitting 220 now? I think we're hitting 220. This is just absolutely manic. This is just crazy. I'm not even going to go for the Buzzwall turn here. It's just not worth it. <laughs> All right, let's get you down because you can actually aid us here with a Miss Magius, which I play in this deck for a very specific reason, and you can probably figure it out anyway. But... Um, I play Miss Magius in this deck so we can go for effectively force ourselves down to four prizes if they take in a quick prize in the early game. Um, okay, that's an Ultra Ball. So that's a Garbodor, which is good news. I have to get rid of some supporter cards, but so be it. Um, I want to get the Garbodor guaranteed here. And then I guess we can just Cynthia into a fresh hand and hopefully get the last Garbodor. And if. Again, if we have to go for the Miss Magius, we can, which is why I want that there. But yeah, Miss Magius is in this deck to um, effectively, if they get an early turn KO and we have a buzz all about, we can Miss Magius go down to four prizes and then just get the one, 120. So that's just the idea of playing it. Um, anyway, let's go and trash land. Is that, is that 220 or is it 200? Oh, it's 220. <laughs> oh my gosh. And we have another rainbow, so we don't have to worry there. We just have to worry about getting a Garbodor next turn. Um, that's going to be the concern. Because my guess is they're going to somehow get energy into play here and just go for a KO. But if they don't, it's game. Um, and that is an absolute walk in the park. I'll tell you that one. An absolute walk in the park. So, 
yeah, I think I made my point. <laughs> this deck is just uh, something that definitely should seriously be considered. But at the same time, uh, it is absolutely weak to Malamar. That's something to be wary about. Uh, Malamar can just walk through this deck because Malamar doesn't really rely so much on item cards. Um, it's more of a deck that when, once you set it up, it can just go and do its own thing, really. Um, especially Malamar Giratina. That, that deck can just do itself. It can just do its own thing. Especially if you play it with Jirachis. It just, it's very, very easy to get going. Um, once it's set up, that is. Oh, dude, don't just pass. Because that is game right there. Oh, he's going to pass, isn't he? I was going to let loose. Okay, fair play to you. Fair play to you. We still have some Guzmans to work with. I think we, I think we have two. So as long as we get one. We do! <laughs> oh, yeah, let loose can't even stop me, buddy. No, it's game now. It is game. We didn't even need trying to punishment, but so be it. All right, let's just uh, play no games and just drop him, drop him a heart. Well played, buddy. And just go for the trash lunch for 250. Is that... 290 damage. <laughs> oh, that is painful, man. That is absolutely painful. I feel sorry for him. I mean, he just dumped his whole, like, almost his, his like, half of his deck was gone turn one. That was just stupid. Let's roll another one. Um, that was a bit too quick of a game. We might have a bit of a harder matchup, though, because that is literally the ideal matchup for us. Which is great. I mean, that's like the first time on the channel where the matchup that I really want to show you guys um, to at least help you understand my co my thought process in making the deck and uploading the deck, it, it actually happened once. <laughs> Usually it's like, well, this is the worst matchup. Um, or I emphasize it and say it is but really the case. Um, anyway, let's go first. Oh, we're playing uh, Jean Papi. Eh, Papi. Uh, that's kind of a bad hand. So thank God it's a mulligan. But uh, I want to see what we're up against here. I see Psychic. I see Water. It's probably a Quagsire deck. Let's wait and see. Uh, always stop the Jirachi. There we are. What's going on? What do we? What do we got? What do we got? That's that's. I guarantee you right now that is a hundred and ten percent a. Um, oh yes, please. A good old Quaggy deck. Everyone calls it Quagnag. I call it Quagnadal. <laughs> That's just that. That just be me. Anyway, let's go for Cynthia here and see what we get. Hopefully, we can just get some stuff to just continue our setup. Well, it looks like we're going to be relying on uh, good old Buzzy here. <laughs> just leave it at that. Um, considering this is an evolution deck, um, I really am just keen to take a prize next turn because they're obviously not going to go for an attack. Um, if it's the deck, I think it is. I'm, I'm assuming it's Quagnag with. Um, uh, Curum. It might be the new Curum, because that's what people are looking to experiment that card with right now, so it might be Quagnac Curum. Curum? Curum? Am I saying it right? I don't know. Alright, buddy, you can force me to do that. That is fine in my books, buddy, because I'll just be taking this thing out. <laughs> uh, I don't mind doing that at all, mate. If they go for the pass, that is such a weak turn. Okay, I'm about to say. No support, and they just go, yep. You, you go, you go. You go, you go. All right. Um, trying to just I'll play next turn. I think we just might go for a Cynthia or something, but I don't know, man. It depends on what this guy does. What's going on? I understand their acro bikes and stuff to get the energy in the discard pile, so they can you know accelerate things into play. That makes perfect sense. So this is anything but a Taylor. I haven't seen that card in a bit. Um, I haven't seen that card in a bit. Not gonna lie. Um, we have to get at least. A whooper. There we go. They have to get at least a whooper down. I mean, is this guy playing Aqua Patch? He might be playing Aqua Patch. So in that sense, uh, getting a Quag Quagsire out is, is definitely more vital than Naganado. But sometimes that's a bit of a hard decision. Do you start ch going for the Naganado right away or the Quagsire? Ideally both, but what if not? Because if you're playing Aqua Patch, then Quagsire. But if you're not, then maybe Naganado would be better to go for, you know? Um, because... Let's just use a Jirachi here quickly before I do it. Actually, no, I might as well go for the Cynthia first. See as much of my deck as possible before going for the Stellar Wish. All right, I'll take these guys just for the Garbodors because they are using items. Uh, two, four, six, eight. There we are. So uh, that's good news. Let's go for the Stellar Wish. And I guess we go for the Guzma, right? The Guzma seems like the, the smart one there. Um, 
So this is pretty good already for us. We, we are going to be hitting 80 damage regardless now with a Garbodor, so we don't have to worry too much about missing out on damage output, which usually is what you struggle with in the early game. This is kind of a deck that picks up as you play it. It just pokes damage around, and then there's like certain points in the game where you're going to be doing a ton of damage. Usually Garbodor's the late game, Boswell's the full prize turn. Um, there's usually a, the, it's at those points where you really need to use the things like your Guzmans and stuff to really pick your targets after you've poked around a little bit. That's usually how Bozgarb works. But with that said... They still got another turn of really getting their engine going because they haven't, they wasn't, sorry, able to bench the Poipo. So what we can really do is go and just target. If, if we get a Garbodor next time, we can target that, take it down. Because so long as they don't get a Naganadal out, then we should be fine if they don't play Aquapatch, that is. But we'll have to wait and see. They, they must have an important card in their hand to play a Lily for five instead of a Cynthia or something. Okay. So they're going to get energy out. So taking out the Quagsire now is kind of pointless. But taking out that Poipo is not pointless. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say is and realize no. Okay, that's still a ton of items going down. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 120. Sweet. Any more? And uh, we'll be one-shotting this thing. So I am fine with that one. Now, do they play Aqua Patch though? That's the thing. That is the question I'm asking right now. Regardless, um... I do want to get a Garbodor next turn because we are in, in for it if we got Garbodor out. We really are. But again, again, this kind of just proves my point. It's just so item heavy, this format. It's crazy. Um, right, let's get... Actually, I think it'd be ideal to kind of thin down stuff a little bit. Let's get an energy on you. I kind of want to play this Erica. So let's get that down. And Erica. There's a Garbodor. There's a Shrine. That's good news. Um, we might as well just poke into this for now. We've got the Guzma, so we can take this out after Shrine does a bit of work, which is nice. Because that's just a quick prize. But I really want to get that. So if they get the Naganado out now, first thing I'm going to do is just Guzma that and take it down. So long as they don't bench another Poipo. Because that means they have to take another two turns to get what, what they ideally want. So, yeah. I think, I think that's what I want to do. Okay, so they do have it out, so which means they are going to get the attack off this turn and get some spread down, which is bad, because that means we need to get this sorted out. Um, otherwise, it is going down next turn, so that's a bit of a concern. But I do really want to play the Guzman play, even if it risks losing this and them taking a prize, because, um, yeah, taking out this, this Naganade is going to be quite important, because this deck is starting to set up now, and it's going to be a problem. Obviously, they do play Aqua Patch. All right, okay. Right, we need to start finding our Trubbishes ASAP. Because they are just di diving deep into the into the item place. So that's that's good news for us. How much are we doing now? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. 140 damage. All right. Okay. Okay. So we've got to take out this Naganado. Now, I would love to take this thing out. And we can, I think. But it is much better for us to take out that thing for the time being. Because in the long run, that's going to really screw us up. So let's let's not screw ourselves up here. Okay, let's... Now we can get another Garbodor out. Actually, I want to do that, don't I? I really want to do that. So let's get rid of the gear and the choice band. Very nervous about doing the, getting rid of the choice band because that helps us with this. But I think making sure this thing doesn't die <laughs> is just a little bit more valuable. So let's make sure that that stays alive. Let's go for the Naganado because that's going to be a lot of their stuff um, coming out. Let's go for... I guess we could get another Guzma, actually. That would really help for later on. So let's do that for now. Sweet. Um, okay, let's bring this out. So they aren't getting any KO next turn, which is good. That's really good. Um, and they have to now take another turn to make sure they get the other Naganados out. But um, I kind of targeted that rather than the Quagsire. Because I know the Quagsire is the, the, the main... Man, I guess, of the deck, right? Because you can just use Aqua Patches. But I think for me, looking at their board state, the Naganada was better because they don't have another Poipo down. So they can't be as efficient as this deck is meant to be. And also, they can't hit us for weakness, <laughs> which is a big problem. So, because they don't even need to go for this, they can just Naganada and win, right? The whole thing. So I don't think I don't know if they've realized that yet because they had they did charge up the Volcanium right away. But I don't know if they realized that if they just Naganado, they will 
pretty much win because they're going to 160 us all the way through and they're going to one shot this. Well, no, they're not actually. Ah, resistance. But what's that going to do, right? <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty much one shotting everything in the deck except for these Jirachis. Um, so, playing Nagnado is just the smart move, I guess. But with that said, um, I, was, I, was, I was wondering if we were going down to our Sledgehammer turn this, but we're not. But I think just targeting this is going to be important. Now, one thing I worry about, though, is I do want to Guzma this for game eventually, or Guzma that to really cause them some issues. But I think just taking out the Naganado is going to help in some way, I guess, because it is such a vital weakness to our deck. But at the same time, I'm really worried about... Well, actually, they're going to take, like... Oh, they're gonna they're gonna skip the, the the full price turn if we don't take this down. We gotta take the Volcanian down um, because the spread damage is going to miss effectively the full price turn. We want to be able to one shot with Boswell with its sledgehammer. So I think going in here with the Garbodor seems like the smart play. Let's do that. Um, all right, sweet. And I think we just go for Lily for... <laughs> Lily for two is bad, but I mean... I don't want to get rid of the rainbow. I don't want to get rid of the Lily. So let's just hold on. Yeah, okay. Well, in that case, it would have been easier to get rid of the Lily. <laughs> All right, let's take down the Volcanium because the spread damage is... I'm, I'm, I'm really worried about that. I, I do really want my Sledgehammer turn. So let's not mess around here. Um, so we can one-shot that Lele. And uh, next turn, we can drop down that Trubbish... So we know once the Buzzwell goes down, then we can rely on another attacker. We are hitting 180 war damage with the Garbador anyway. So yeah, we're, we're, we're good with the Garb. So yeah, that's cool with me. Um, but yeah, it's it's Lele and then one more. Or one more and then Lele. But, but I think getting the Lele next turn is going to be vital considering I'm assuming they're going to get a KO on this thing and take us down to the, the full prize range. But yeah, I just didn't, I really didn't want them going with the um, Sauna Blast and taking out this and the Garbodor. And that'll bring them to three, which would really mess up my plan of really utilizing Sledgehammer in this matchup. Because we just need to one hit KO things uh, to be able to win in this, in this game. So um, I thought that was the right thing to do. I thought that was the right thing to do. But nonetheless, if they attack with Quagsire, that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a, a yikes. Um... It's not they'll have to attack with Quagsire, though, to get a KO. I mean, they have to get a KO regardless, right? Because if not, I'm just going to garbage all my way to victory. So they have to get a KO. That's for certain. They are feeling the price, though, of dropping that Lele. I'll tell you that. Like, that is such a huge liability for their deck. It just makes it so much easier for me to get a, get a game out of this. So, or to get game out of this. Wish your baton? All right. You can have your wish your baton. <laughs> but we are definitely going to Guzma for the Lele. Drop that Trubbish. Hopefully, yeah, we have we have the Ultra Ball for Garbador anyway. Um, if we find a Rescue Stretcher, that would be just a lot more reliable. Because I'd rather get two Trubbish down rather than just one. Because all you need to do is Guzma the Trubbish, take it out, and then we lose our Sledgehammer turn, right? So that's a concern for sure. Good top deck. All right, there we go. So we can get the other Trubbish down. So we now have guaranteed... That regardless, we are getting a Garbodor next turn, which is good. Which means I think it's best for me to hold this energy in hand. I've got my hand has everything I need to win. So if I just go for the Stellar Wish here, get a... Might as well just get a Nest Ball. And go for Guzma, take out the Lele with the Sledgehammer turn. Um, which they will probably KO us, KO us after. And then we just Ultra Ball and Rainbow Energy Garbodor game. Okay, so I've got that planned out. So long as they don't drop a Let Loose Marsh Shadow, that's like the worst thing. I've got everything I need in my hand. A Let Loose would screw it up. A Let Loose would screw it up. By the way, uh, just to know, I know you can hear uh, my son coughing in the background. He's got a little bit of a cough, but he is fine. So you don't have to worry um, if he is coughing quite a bit. He's just got a little bit of a, a, little bit of a cold. Um, anyway, game is on the horizon, and that is... Two in a row, if we do get this. And against two very top-tier decks. I would say Quagnag is a, is, isn't tier, like, top-tier, tier one. But it is kind of like tier two-ish kind of deck. Because it is um, pretty good. It can handle a lot of the top-tier decks. And it has come... It, it has got, got pretty far, I think, in a, in a recent tournament. I don't know which 
championship it was, but I think it got in the top 32 of the... Oh, I forgot which one it was, but it was a recent championship, and it is the uh, post... Um, Unbroken Bonds meta. So it is good in this current meta. So that's that. Especially with the new Quagsire, actually. So it is a, it is a valid deck. Um, we're beating that. We're beating Picaron. But that Picaron guy just went everywhere with his item cards. So did this guy. So it might just be a, the fact as well that they both the people we've come up against are so... Um, one, they're probably really used to being um, so quick with their items. Because Garbodor has fallen off in, in the meta. So, they don't have to worry about anything, almost. Um, so, it is just a format. So, so, so item-reliant, I guess. Um, that I think Garbodor is just in too much of a good spot to, to kind of um, not do well, right? But at, at the same time, you have to bear in mind that if you're coming up against some top-tier players, right? They're going to be aware of the Garbodor. And they're going to be very smart in how they play to make sure they don't play any item cards which is why i would maybe guess uh, recommend try testing out which i'll probably upload sometime as well a garbage or gengar deck because if you're coming up against a top tier player that would be usually a lot more viable anyway game is in the hand um so that be it good game to my opponent let's just get the uh garbage out sweet we didn't get to see miss magius do its thing but you know it's a bit of a niche thing you don't have to do miss magius i just wanted to do it for fun i would recommend going for Zeb Striker um, if you do want to just get a, a bit of boost of consistency. But I mean, you've seen in these two games, this deck is consistent, right? It's, it's achieving uh, draw almost every single turn. It's doing its job almost every single turn. So yeah, it's pretty good. Anyway, let me show you the, the list. Um, I think it is pretty well fine-tuned, um, but you've got to bear in mind Buzzgarb is naturally a fine-tuned deck. But this one I did just build from scratch. Um, so let's, let me show you it. Is it this one? Is this one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there we go. I was getting confused. So this is the list. Um, quite simple. You'd think the energy would be a bit awkward, but it's actually not. It's actually really good at what it does. Um, you have to bear in mind that it's quite hard for you to pull off something like a swing around. So playing things like B-Swing in this deck just doesn't work. It's not really ideal. As I said, it's more really focused on using Trash Launch and Sledgehammer. Uh, for the early game poke damage, Sledgehammer for its, its full price turn, and then uh, Trash Lanch for its late game power. So that's what the deck is all about. Um, so go try it out. I mean, it is fun, and it really does capitalize the um, capitalize from the, the current meta, which is so item reliant. Anyway, with that said, do be like if you did enjoy, and of course, do subscribe for more. And up until tomorrow, please do take care, and peace.